Welcome back. Uh, in this tutorial, uh, we will try to run a simple uh, data mining exercise. Uh, to do this kind of predictive analytics, we actually have to partition the data. So we will also learn about a node called data partition node. Okay, so let's get started. So uh, you should already have a library. Uh, you should have already created a library uh, that you have that has the data that you want to analyze, right? In this case, we'll probably be using Boston housing as a data source. If you don't have this data source for some reason, you can always use existing libraries from SAS uh, and then create uh, or import a different data set to do the same uh, to do the same or similar kinds of steps. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, I'm going to create a new data source. Okay, so here we have the wizard that's going to help us uh, import the data. I'm going to click next. I'm going to try to find the data source. So I click browse. Okay. And now you can see that SAS has uh, some existing libraries. So you can actually go to SAS help and you can try the same thing with cars or birth white or any birth white or any of these other data sets. Okay. But in this case, we already have a library that we created, nklib. And I've put in a lot more data sets here, but really what we need is Boston housing. Okay. So let's select this, okay. Now you have this data set selected, uh, click next. And it seems to be slightly slow, but uh, we'll live with it. And this basically shows us that this data set has 15 variables and about 500 observations. So there's 15 columns and 500 rows, okay. So let's click next. And here's the first important step that you need to be aware of. This is basically a metadata advisor. This is basically SAS Enterprise Miner trying to be helpful in finding out uh, finding out the characteristics of the data that you're importing. For example, it's going to look at each column and try to figure out what kind of data it is. Is it a continuous variable? Is it a categorical variable? If it's categorical, is it nominal or ordinal? Okay. Um, you can use basic advisor, but if I, if I want SAS to make more intelligent decisions, I'm typically going to change the default option here to advanced, right? Uh, and then I'm going to click next. Uh, but before I move on to next, I just do want to show you that if I click on customize, I have some customization options. Uh, you can explore this at your own time. I'm not going to do it today. Uh, I'm just going to leave it as it is. All I did was move from basic to advanced, click next, okay? And now it's trying to generate the metadata by examining the observations. All right. So we should have uh, the next step. So here you have the list of variables. Uh, in this case, I want to keep things simple. Uh, so I'm going to reject the cat MEDV. Uh, let me try to do this. Actually, I'm going to start from the beginning. Okay. And select the first um, row here and then go all the way down scroll all the way down shift press shift press shift down and then click should select everything okay i'm going to reject reject all of the roles here so what i'm trying to do is keep the analysis simple so let me basically select charles river keep it as an input variable okay let me also use crim as an input variable maybe i'm going to use rm as an input variable okay and uh, and the medv we do need a target variable this is predictive analytics so i'm going to use this as uh, target variable right here so if you if you did this correctly uh, again you can experiment on your own uh, the way i'm doing this is keeping it simple reject most of the variables right assign charles crim and RM number of rooms as input variables and MEDV median value of a house in a neighborhood as a target variable okay so we are going to be trying to examine these the role of these three input variables on the median value of a housing uh, housing in a neighborhood okay so let's click next and it says 15 columns 506 rows but we only selected four columns we rejected everything else uh, this is the original uh, columns here Okay, I don't want to create a sample data set, so I'm going to keep the default options, move on to the next step, and I'm going to keep this as raw data. And if you notice here, 
you see something called train validate test there are options for you to assign the entire data as training data set but i'm not going to do that i'm just going to keep it as is no changes to the default options click next and i finish okay so this should help me create or import a data source into my project okay the project name is reg 2016 i created this project uh, before i started the session right and i have a new uh, data here and we also need a diagram to work and if as you notice we don't have anything here so i'm going to create a new diagram which is going to be literally a blank space so i'm going to call it let's say boston you can call it um, other appropriate names regression analysis whatever you want to call it I'm just going to press ok and it should now give me a blank workspace where i can create my process flow okay now as i mentioned uh, you have the diagram you have the data source we are ready to start working okay so i'm going to go to the data source drag and drop it onto this white space this diagram here just drag and drop it that's it and should now bring in the data source into the process flow okay you can always examine the properties of this data source by selecting it and on the left hand side you will see the corresponding properties right it says the role is raw right and you have a bunch of things here if i want to examine the variables i can click on this three ellipses sign here the ellipses here and it's going to bring you back to the screen that we had when we were importing the data and if you remember we rejected most of these variables right selected charles criminal crim and room as input and medv as target so you can see it even from here in case someone else brought in the brought in the data set and you don't really remember what the input variables are this is a good place to check okay second thing that i want to mention is that this is pretty much going to be every time you drag and drop the data set right you're going to see the exact same set where you had three input variables and one target variable it's simply because this is the way you brought this in okay so if you want to make additional changes let's say that you want to select a variable right and let's say you want to keep it even more simple let's say you don't want Charles River and you want to reject it, you can reject it here, right? Uh, sorry, you can go to the role here and you can reject it here. Then it will be a local change in this for this, for this data set. If you reject it here, it will be a local change. So this data source will have two input variables, one target variable, and Charles River is, if you rejected it, will be rejected, okay? So I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to keep it as input. The point I wanted to make here is that I'm just going to cancel this. Okay. The point I wanted to make is that when you bring in a data source, the changes you make there under the meta near the meta advisor area is a global change. Every time you drag and drop, you'll see the exact same things you did in the beginning. Okay. But if you want to make some specific changes, let's say reject an additional variable or or bring in additional variables. You can make local changes after you drag and drop and then either right clicking and go to variables edit variables or you can just select the properties and go to variables and make changes to your hot content so you can put in all of the other 14 variables as input variables if you wanted to okay so now we have the data source we're not going to make any changes from the beginning we want to keep it simple right now what we want to do is i mean if you want to explore data of course you go to explore right you may want to use, let's say, uh, Graph Explorer. You may also want to do Multiplot. You may also want to try Stat Explorer. These are all good places for you to begin, drag and drop them, and you can start exploring the data. But for the time being, we don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want to get started, and I want to, I'm going to assume you've done some kind of analysis, exploration before, but just let's just start running, uh, start running a simple, uh, simple model here, okay? So the first step for a data mining project is that I need to go to sample, right? And I need to look for this, um, look for this node called data partition under sample tab, okay? I'm gonna drag and drop the data partition tab, okay? And now you have a new node in this, in this diagram, right? Now we are constructing a process flow. We have a data source, we have a new node called data partition, right? I can drag, I can just create this arrow. All I did was I moved the mouse around until became this symbol pencil symbol drag and connected that's it so now we created a process flow we have boston housing data set data source 
and we have another node called data partition node that's going to partition this data and if you remember we had about 500 observations okay so i select this the property should change for example data source is a different property and i select this the appropriate property will show up and you will see that like there is a there are a bunch of things here like variables that i can edit again right there are partitioning methods we want to leave it as default but in case for in the future for some other uh, reason you want to change some of these uh, or you want to specify a, a way of way of uh, sampling you may want to select it right but if you leave it as default sas will intelligently do the right kind of sampling for you and this is what we're going to do throughout this class we will leave it at the default position let sas determine what's the appropriate way to partition okay and you also see something called random seed which ensures that it's randomly sampled if indeed random sampling is used okay and here we come to the most important part in this module in this node right this is the thing that you need to change okay so you see something for training something for validation and something for testing right and to start with and i we're going to start with the very simple single model so i don't want to do any testing this you would only use if you run multiple models okay so i'm just going to create a partition with about 60 percent of the data going to train the data to build a model and the remaining 40 percent of the data set to, to, to validate the model okay so we have two partitions training validation training uses 60 percent of the data again this is typically if sas does it right it should be random sampling appropriately sample so it'll, it'll, it'll basically sample 60 percent or take out 60 percent of that about 500 observations so it'll use about 300 observations to create the model and then it will use the remaining 200, the other 200 observations, the remaining 40% of the, of the observations to validate the model, okay? So let's see what, what happens. This is the only, only change we made, 60% and 40%. And since we are only testing one, uh, one model, I'm going to leave it at zero for the time being. We don't need to test this for the time being, okay? So all we've done is drag and drop a data partition, right? And we've changed this property 60 and 40. So one of the good things about SAS Enterprise Miner is that it again hides a lot of complexity. And the first time you're using it, you're going to be seeing a lot of uh, properties here. If you try to focus on these individual values, you may be kind of overwhelmed. So the trick is to know what things you need to touch for simple projects. So for this particular node, the only thing we changed is training and validation. That's it, 60 and 40. Hopefully it adds up to 100, okay? So that's pretty much it. So if you if you if you've done that, you know, I mean, there's you can if you want you can run it, you know, just to see that it's been sampled. Sure, why not run this, right? So it's going to run and create the partition, okay? But really, we don't want to stop here because what we want to do is we want to go on and create a new modeling node, right? In this case, we are going to be trying out regression, and then run a regression model on this data set, okay? Okay, if it, if it ran well, then you should see this check mark sign, which means both nodes ran without any errors, right? And if you want to really see what's there at the end here, what's the output of this node, you can always right click, have a look at the results, right? It's going to basically generate, in this case, an appropriate output. And it's basically telling me, I'm going to scroll down, right? It's going to, t it's giving me a summary of the variables. It's telling me that I rejected most of the variables, right? I have about three input variables, one binary, which is Charles, and two interval that's CRIM and room, and then one target variable that's an interval variable, right? Everything else has been rejected as, this, as shown here, okay? And then it also shows you that the way it partitioned it, the original data set was 506. Since we assigned 60% as training, it picked 300, 304 of these observations for training a model, and the remaining 202, right, for validating the model, okay? And right now we're going to leave it as it is. Uh, we can close this results, okay? And then what we need to do is now really to start building a model, okay? And we will try to do that in the next session. Thanks.